Hello. Hi, Kristen. Yes, hi. This is Terry. Yes, okay. hi, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, thanks for taking Good. the call. It's been kind of kind of a interesting 24 hours, to say the least. Uh, yes, it I'm, has, definitely. May, maybe for you as well. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I've, in fact, I know I have the information you're looking for. So, oh, my gosh. Well, um, thank you. Oddly enough, uh, I did go to high school with this gal. Oh, my gosh. And, okay. Uh, I do remember her, her situation at that time and, and, and so forth. Uh, her name is Julie. Okay. Her, uh, her maiden name is Gillig. Okay. And her married name is Kaler. Okay. Julie said she would uh, be more than happy to hear from you. Uh, I told her that I would also get you her information, uh, Facebook contact and whatnot, because she was driving when I called her. So. Okay. Um, perfect. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. And, and you know. Oh, thank you. All, all I want to do is I want I just want to hear stories. So you know, if you guys ever meet, uh, we would love to do a, a news story on it. Totally up to you, and good luck to you guys. Well, thank you so much. I'll definitely stay in contact. With yeah, you. yeah. I wish you well. I think it's a, it's an amazing story, and uh, Julie is really an awesome person. So I wish you luck and God bless. Imagine, if you will, receiving a Facebook message from someone you don't even know who's looking for their birth mother from 33 years ago. That happened to me in January of 2017 when a woman named Kristen reached out to me on Facebook wondering if I knew a person who would have given birth in 1984 and then given the baby up for adoption in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. At first, I did not know where to turn or who this could be, but I thought about it for a while and then consulted a mutual friend by the name of Patty Reese uh, who went to high school with me. And at that time, I was pretty sure I was on the right track to hook up someone who had been missing their birth mother for 33 years uh, and put them together. I was very fortunate to be part of a story of bringing a young lady and her mother together and it may have been the easiest thing I've done that has brought so much joy to two different families who were many states away from each other. So bringing Kristen, the daughter, and Julie, the mother, together after 33 years, it's really a cool story. I hope you enjoy it. And this Christmas, for the first time, Kristen Ramey will be able to spend Christmas with her birth mother, Julie Kramer. Kristen, Julie, Terry Holtzman, uh, join me in the studio. Uh, what a remarkable story. Terry, let me start with you. When you got this phone call, what, what was your first reaction? Did you take it seriously? I got the Facebook message from a random got a Facebook person message, right? that I did not know asking me uh, if I knew anything about this situation of somebody who may have given up a uh, 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 baby for adoption back in that time period. And I had to sleep on it and think about it. And I responded to Kristen on Facebook and I said, why are you asking me? And what was your response? Um, it was because I was searching for a while and I knew I was born in Fond du Lac. And um, I knew that I was looking through alumni websites of somebody that would be in 19... 19- graduated in 1983 and I came across St. Mary's Springs. And since I was adopted through Catholic charities, I thought maybe she graduated at this Catholic high school. And they so happened to have a 1983 alumni website. Terry happened to be, I believe, the administrator of the website or ran the reunions. Did you look at any of the pictures and say, hey, this looks like this could be my mom? I looked through all the Julie's And I actually happened to pull her name up and look her up on Facebook. But growing up, we always thought that the whole family had brown hair and blue eyes. And she has blonde hair. So I just completely didn't even think that it was her. Did you ever think of calling her just to see? No. No. I actually created a profile on that website. But then when I saw that Terry was the administrator of the website... I decided to just go straight to him because I assume that people that run reunions like to keep in touch and keep information going on what everybody has going right, on in their lives. You, you, Terry, you, you and Julie have known each other since 
grade school. Right, first grade on. Um, so when you made this phone call, what was going through your? Were you excited about giving her this news, or did you think, well, what what were you thinking? First of all, I wanted to make sure it was all dialed in incorrect information. So I reached out to one of our classmates, uh, Julie uh, uh, Reese, um, not Patty Reese. I'm sorry, Patty Reese, and. Uh, to make sure, and Patty confirmed it. Uh, and then from there, I connected the dots even further, but I slept on it one more night just to make sure. And then the next day, I made that call to Julie, and then I made another call to Kristen, and I said, you guys are definitely the match that you were both looking for. And it was it was the easiest, most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life because it wasn't wasn't that hard, but to be in the middle of this thing was like, yeah. wow, thank you. It was it was fun. I gave goosebumps thinking all about it all over again. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, it sends uh, chills down your spine when you think about it, and and you start to tear up a little bit. So, Julie, did you know immediately when Terry started telling you? It sounds like you you knew immediately that this was your daughter. Absolutely, I did, and it's something I've been waiting for. But I I knew that. Um, from my family, knowing other families that have adopted, I knew it was the right thing to do since since I had to make that choice in 1984. I knew it was the right choice, and I knew families that, that weren't able to have children. So, But um, I, I did always wonder if she was okay, and um, making that contact was the best thing ever. Um, but I can't think of any person... Um, other than Terry, to bring us together, that was um, more perfect. Terry's a perfect person to have done that for me, um, and knowing him since first grade was was great. Um, and then when Kristen started to share our pictures, it was actually hauntingly amazing to see how much we looked like each other, or how much she looked like me, um, and that was just amazing. Do you remember that first when you when you first saw a picture of what she looks like today as a woman? Oh yes, um, it that I thought how beautiful she was um, when I first saw the pictures of today. But then she also shared pictures of when she was growing up throughout um, her growing up years, um, and those were just shocking to see um, her pictures as a baby. And and then I shared the pictures of myself as a baby, and it's just amazing, um, side by side, how much she looks like me. You had tried to track down your mother about six years earlier, so tell the listeners about that. Yes, I tried to find her in um, 2011. So I went through the state of Wisconsin, and she had signed the consent form saying, yes, you can release my information because we were going to invite her to um, my wedding. And unfortunately, my birth father did not. So because he did not sign consent, they wouldn't release her information. Well, did you stop there or did you yeah, try I, other avenues? Um, I was pretty upset at the time so because of that. So I did stop trying. And then kind of I picked had, it up again at that time. I really didn't expect anything to surface. I really didn't expect this to just happen when it did. Did Have you known pretty much all your life that you were adopted? Absolutely. I was raised, and I was always raised on the premise of when you find your biological parents, not if. And every birthday and every holiday, my parents would always say, you know, your biological parents are thinking about you today. Was, did they encourage you to mm -hmm. try to find her? Absolutely. Absolutely. They wanted to invite her to my wedding also. And have you had an opportunity to meet her parents? Two days ago. What was that like? It was amazing. Um, and I not only got to meet her mom and dad, I met her grandma, and yesterday I met her sister, who is also adopted. And it was, and she, her sister got to meet my crazy family. So she's joined <laughs> in too. <laughs> so we've met each other, and... Krista wasn't able to invite me to her wedding six years ago, but last June she was able to be part of my wedding. What was that like? It was amazing. I was so blessed to be a part of it. It all felt like it just came together at the perfect timing. 
how difficult, Julie, was it when Kristen was born to know that she's not going to be with you, that she's going to be living with another family? I had very supportive parents. I'll tell you, in the beginning, um, they were not happy with me. But, um, you know, my faith in God and our family's faith in God takes us a long way. But um, I had to look at myself as um, I had to look at what was important for this baby. And I couldn't look at my what was important for me. And I kind of looked at myself as a surrogate mom. And I had to look at a family out there that could not have children. And so that's really what I looked at the entire nine months. And um, I certainly took pictures of Kristen and I looked at her. Um, and I never held her because I knew that would make it hard, more difficult. And then um, after I spent, back in the day, you know, we spent a couple days in the hospital. And then um, I signed paperwork and she went to a foster home. And I found out this weekend when I met her parents that they didn't know about her until um, maybe a, when she was about five weeks old. I thought they found out about her when she was born, but they did not. She went to a foster home, and they um, found out about her then. And then right before I went to court to give up my rights, um, then they found out about her. And um, so, but it was always something I knew that I had to do. So for, for the good of her, it wasn't about me. And how does that make you feel? Today, Kristen, knowing that your mom put you up for adoption because she didn't think she could properly take care of you at that time. I always knew that. My parents always told me that. And that was something growing up that was always, we always knew that that was the reason. It was, she was young. She wanted to give me the best life possible. And she couldn't give me that life being that young on her own as a single parent. So she did the, she did it selflessly out of love. So. This is your first Christmas with your mom and. Yes. The very first words out of Kristen's mouth um, were, thank you for giving me a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. And nothing made my heart swell more than that. And it made everything okay last um, February or last January when we spoke. And um, we met in February, uh, February 17th for the very first time. And we met at another very close friend of mine's house in Sheboygan. Um, she opened her home to us. And that's where we were able to meet for the first time face to face. Because I live in Colorado, so I came back to meet her. And then she spent a couple of times. She's been out there a couple of times. So, um, but hearing those words, thank you for giving me a wonderful life. And then the very first time we met when I came here, she came with a huge bag of things, um, clothes that she came home from the hospital with, pictures, and her mom even gave me to keep photographs of her entire life. And so I have those at my house, and her picture's on the wall at our house all the way through her life. So how has this, I mean, this is a brand new chapter in, in both of your lives. Where do you, is it almost like you're picking up from the first day that when, when she was born. What what? How do you envision your relationship with each other moving forward? My other two children. I have a daughter and a son, and they have a sister. Um, my mom has a, another daughter. My um, new husband has another daughter, and my uh, nieces and nephews have a cousin. I agree. I have a new sister and brother. I have a mom. I have a grandma. I have aunts and uncles. I have cousins. She's got a crazy new life. I have a crazy new family. <laughs> <laughs> but I love them all. So, Terry, when you hear their story and realizing what you were able to I just am so happy, Greg. Like I said before, it wasn't that difficult, but I proceeded with caution and care and consulted my wife every hour on this whole thing as it was opening up and one thing was leading to the next. Every dot was connecting. All the T's were getting crossed. All the I's were getting dotted. 
and then when you I was for was sure, real. then I knew it was real. And then I recorded Julie, I recorded Kristen on the phone without their permission, <laughs> but I never ever used the audio cut until today. And it was an amazing short period of events that brought this whole thing together 33 years later. And I'm, I'm so happy to be part of it. I'm so happy for them. And then hearing their stories today on how things evolved makes me uh, even more thrilled to be part of it. Julie's mom and my mom worked together back in the 70s and 80s at the villa in Mount Calvary. So uh, we have a long uh, a friendship and uh, I'm so happy that I could be part of bringing them together. Wow. There are hundreds, probably thousands uh, of adoption reunions that don't end necessarily in the way the people think they're going to turn out. And, and there are thousands of uh, people who are adopted who search their entire lives with no luck in finding their birth parents. And you were able to do it? I was. And here we are today. I'm truly lucky and blessed. It was a beautiful story. What a wonderful story. Hey, Julie, can you hear me okay? Oh, hold on one second, Jerry. Let me put you on. Um, okay. It's going to be a little bit of an unusual uh, phone call regarding this, but I, I, I wanted to run this by you and talk to you about it. I got, okay. I got a... Uh, an unusual Facebook message uh, from a gal I do not know. Okay. Her name is Kristen Ramey. Do you know her? Oh. Well, um, you might you might actually know her before this call is over. And this okay. is this is just an unusual call. So. Okay. This girl did not know me. She reached out to me on Facebook. Okay. And. Um, she knew I was a um, involved in leadership at at the school. Um, okay. And she says uh, in her Facebook message, just a long shot, random shot. She said that she was given up for adoption in the spring of 1984. Oh my God. And according to her Facebook message to me, the only thing she knows is St. Agnes Hospital. She, oh my God! She was given the birth name Maria Michelle. Oh my God, Terry! And her birth mom's first name was Julie. Yeah, that's what it is. It was a closed adoption, but I opened up the records and I said if she wanted to contact me, she could. And but I wasn't going to contact her because it was that was up to her, that was her decision. Oh my God! Wow. So this this all checks out then? Yeah. I mean, because I don't want her to, I, I've always felt like, you know, I was going to stay in the background because... Somehow through the system, she, she, you know, she tried to track you down as well. Okay. And she wanted to invite you to her wedding in 2011, and she tried oh, to track you down. Oh, that's such a beautiful and, uh, invitation. a couple of messages we've exchanged. So it feels to me like she doesn't, I mean, it's such a nice thing that you're doing this for me, you know, she, like, knows that you were okay with seeing her and she knows that you were trying to hunt her down as well in this case uh the other party involved was not okay with it so because one of the parties said no that made it a no for both parties oh wow um wow i know that this is hitting you like a ton of bricks here today i'm sure you know what it doesn't it to me it is it's it, none of this has ever this to me this it, you know it's so weird, Terry. When you called me, this was the last thing in my mind. But she's, wow, I think she's thirty-three years old. Yep, she um, would be. Yeah, Her birthday you, is February 9th. Well, this all checks out because you know I I thought of you, then I thought, well, who knows? There's a lot of Julies out there, and then I thought, okay, if she she knew she knew the fact that she was born on the ninth. She knew her mother. Yep. Was, she knew her mother was eighteen, and then she knew her mother was nineteen when she was adopted. So the mother had a yep. birthday in February. So. You know, I did what all all good FBI people would do. I stalked you on Facebook and found out your birthday's in February. And uh -huh. so I just put this together, and I just wanted to be sure before I go any further that... Uh, I've always, to me, this was, I was always going to stay in the background. That was, that's the only thing I always wondered about. And so, and what's weird is I'm getting married on June 3rd. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. 
That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, you got a lot. Ah. 2017 is a pretty big year for you then, Julie. I guess so. I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to connect you guys, and uh, I, ah. I can't wait to hear stories and, and whatnot and everything that goes with it. Holy cow. Um, yes, but please go ahead and tell her that I'm, I'm happy to um, have her contact me, and I appreciate hey. her um, letting me know. Thanks. Julie, Have a great day. Yeah. God bless you, Julie. I wish you luck with the whole thing, okay? okay? Take care. Oh, thanks. You bet. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.